Assalamu alaikum. I am Yusuf Abdullah Mahfouz. This is our final demonstration video of our group project of the course Programming Technique 2. Throughout the course, as a part of our final project, we have tried to develop a game which is actually a game that consists of a ball, a pedal, and some set of bricks. The name of our developed game is Brick Breaker. Now I am going to demonstrate the gameplay of our developed Brick Breaker game. As you can see, this is the interface of our game. We have tried to keep the interface very minimalistic, clean, and simple. As you can see, the pedal is at the bottom of the screen and it is in orange color. The red ball is on top of it. In the middle portion of the screen, we have all the bricks. There are only two red colored bricks. Whenever the ball touches the red bricks, the player will lose two lives. And the player will get maximum three life. After losing all the lives, the game will over. And if the ball touches all the bricks other than those two red bricks, the player will get points. Now let's try to play the game and before that, I need to control the pedal using the left and right arrow key of the keyboard and pressing the space button will release the ball from the pedal. Let's start the gameplay. I need to tap the space button to start the game. As you can see the ball hit the bricks and score is updating and on the left edge of my screen we have a score counter and on the right edge of the screen we have a life counter and I have three lives right now. The ball touched the bricks and my score is adding or updating and whenever the ball touches the red bricks I will lose two of my lives. But let's lose one life okay i have i have lost one of my lives you can see the life counter is updated and it is showing that i have two lives remaining so uh, now if i if my ball touches the red bricks i will lose one life sorry i will lose two lives and and after losing all the three lives the game will over this is actually the demonstration of our project gameplay. So now the ball is touching the upper portion of the screen and breaking the bricks. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Walid Babbaya and I will be explaining the uh, encapsulation part. So here we have uh, the, the ball class. And in protected we have uh, which are uh, the encapsulation. Uh, we have the coordinate uh, the coordinate class, the board class, the battle uh, class, the life uh, class, and the score class. So in these classes we already put them on uh, uh, on private. So they are all uh, part of this uh, of this class. So here we got uh, in public we have the accessors and mutators uh, for the ball class and then uh, we have the board.hpb it's uh, uh, in private uh, and in public we can see it's uh, there is git and set which are uh, accessors and mutators for the board class and then we have in, in coordinates.hpb we have the the class which, which uh, is protected uh, and in public. So in public we can see uh, it's also sit and get for uh, the coordinate class. And here in life that HPP it's uh, private uh, and it's in public we also use the sit and get um, uh, sit and get which are accessors and mutators. Uh, and in battle.hpb we it's also in private uh, and in public we use the same uh, formula 
uh, the score.pb it's also the same they're all all are private uh, and they all go back to they all class um, uh, are class members for for the the ball class which is this one assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh myself masafa masaf navid and i'm here to present my part uh, which is uh, I'm going to explain about a bit about uh, association and uh, inheritance and po polymorphism which we uh, apply to during our uh, during our uh, brick breaker project so first talking about association we ha we got aggregation and composition so uh, first I'm gonna so in this ball dot HPP file uh, here uh, you can see that we made a class uh, we made a class named uh, uh, coordinate coordinate class we have one coordinate class and uh, in this ball uh, ball class we call this coordinate class uh, the we make the object of this coordinate class so we uh, we basically uh, the coordinate class and ball between uh, this between this uh, this classes we have uh, made the composition uh, relationship and uh, this is the only only relation we made composition and the rest of other relation we made uh, most of them are uh, aggregation relationship uh, these are associated uh, this uh, for ball class uh, board paddle life and score this four class are associated with this ball class so why we associated this ball class uh, this uh, this board paddle life score classes with ball class because when the ball uh, move into the game board so the ball need to know about the location and the information uh, about the x and y's uh, value of a uh, board and of course the same goes for the pedal and when the ball uh, uh, hit the bottom surface of the ground then it will uh, it will lose its uh, one life so that's why we need uh, information about life class so uh, and uh, of course when the ball hit the brick it will uh, it will uh, gain score so it will uh, it will get get uh, get points so that's why uh, we need the information about scores of also so so that's why we use uh, aggregation uh, relationship between ball uh, uh, and uh, we associated ball class with uh, board uh, paddle life and score class okay now talking about the bricks class here uh, uh, we have stated this board class score class and life class with brick class um, because uh, of course brick need to know about the playing ground playing board that's why it's need uh, needs board and when when um, the brick will go uh, uh, when the brick will be uh, uh, collide with ball, uh, uh, then it will gain uh, scores and uh, and of course uh, for our as we have a red red brick which which is uh, which is not a score brick which is a bomb brick. So for the bomb brick, uh, we need the information about life. Like whenever the ball hit the bomb brick, it will lose one life. So that's why we uh, associate a life class, score class, and board class with a uh, brick class here. And now for the paddle class, we only associated a uh, board class with the with the paddle class, as our uh, paddle need to know th its boundaries. Like the, the, the as in in our game, uh, we need to move our paddle in uh, in x axis in the right and left. So of course we don't want our paddle to go outside the game board. So to get the information, to get the boundaries, to get to know the value of its uh, the right portion of the board and the left portion of the board. Uh, I associated the board class with the paddle paddle class here. And now talking about inheritance, uh, where we implement this concept of OOP is in this bricks class. So now this bricks, uh, this brick class is our uh, we can say base class or parent class, and we made uh, two other class which are derived or child class of this brick class. Is one is this. Uh, bonus brick class and another one is this bomb brick class so basically our uh, concept behind this uh, applying this inheritance in this brick class uh, making the brick class as our parent class is uh, uh, 
uh, in our game we need two types of bricks where, where majority of the bricks will be uh, bonus brick where our ball gonna hit those bricks those bonus bricks and will uh, get points and uh, talking about that another child class what we, we made already which is a bomb brick class wherever the ball uh, get uh, collide with uh, the bomb brick then the ball uh, will lose one life so that's why uh, to uh, coding for coding efficiency we uh, apply inheritance which is a very important concept of OOP and this uh, brick class and brick is a brick now brick class is here the uh, acting as a base or parent class and you can see here in bonus a bonus brick class here we include uh, the brick class uh, with bonus class by using this inheritance initializer and uh, yeah that's it and uh, in the main function you can you can see that we just here we just call brick and uh, we we use a pointer here to point those uh, those uh, bricks based on their their uniqueness and uh, talking about the polymorphism <coughs> and now talking about polymorphism this concept uh, as we all know that polymorphism is uh, applied on methods so here uh, in brick class we add this draw and undraw uh, method we make it virtual but this draw and undraw method is not actually uh, we can say the the perfect way to apply polymorphism and another another uh, method we use uh, we made virtual here that uh, because uh, to to uh, use the concept of polymorphism we need to uh, make our methods virtual the Thus, uh, those child and derived class can easily use this method. Uh, so this on collision, we made this method on collision uh, because uh, during the game we need to uh, we need to test whether our ball is colliding with uh, colliding with the bricks or not. Uh, so that's why. So as it this method is uh, eligible and uh, for both bonus bricks and bomb class, bomb brick class. So that's why we we make this uh, method uh, virtual and uh, we didn't. Uh, here you can see on the bonus brick. Here we are using the method, rewriting the method, and uh, in bomb la uh, bomb brick class. Here we also rewriting the method, and in CPP file. Here. So the uh, the important thing in the on collision part as uh, why it is the perfect example of polymorphism that this actually on collision means what will gonna happen what will be the action for bonus brick or uh, the object of bomb brick what will be the action of uh, this two so as the action is a action uh, of these two are different so that's why uh, to to uh, get the perfect reaction or the action after getting uh, after getting collide with the ball so here we in the bonus brick we make this on collision part that uh, on collision method we may write is as whenever our ball gonna hit the bonus bricks then it will update the score and uh, and we use some here are some conditions here like whenever our ball gonna hit the brick it will uh, change the direction and uh, of course in the bomb brick you can see the action is different like whenever ball collide colliding with bomb bricks then uh, the life we call the set life loss uh, class uh, where uh, after colliding with the bomb brick and there one life will be uh, disappear from from the lifespan of that ball object assalamu alaikum my name is abu said khutri roman we have finished our project i would like to talk about how and where we implement a rock object in our project let's show it 
if we go our main.cpp file we can see that this line and clearly see that uh, we used an arrow pointer here this arrow pointer we used for brick class and it's an object it's a multiple objects where we create it dynamically for implementing dynamically we use new keyword here it uh, this uh, we use a uh, for loop this is uh, one kind of cosmetics this means if we if we count uh, if is less than 19 then it shows a different color and if this uh, this is a bigger 19 but less than 39 then it will show another color we just use for uh, for a cosmetics and different shows a different color of bricks next uh, we used another if this means for uh, we use here for uh, our fi uh, for fixing uh, for fixing our boom position a uh, boom brick position if uh, brick uh, boom brick index 1 equal to boom brick uh, index 2 then the then it will create a, then it will create a bomb index position uh, we used to have for loop and a draw function this draw function means when uh, when a brick index is when a brick index follow this for loop and it call a draw function and it's draw our it's draw our uh, brick one by one and every uh, one by one by indexing order I think that's all for our area of object in this project. We have used only one one area of object for this project. This one it's a area of uh, it's a area of pointer and uh, a dynamic point. We used here a dynamic pointer and used have uh, used uh, used for here for our draw function. That's all. Thank you everyone. Assalamualaikum.